You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found in the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Tom Robillard, the CEO and co-founder of Veyroot. Tom, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. So I appreciate you being on the show here. You Thanks for ha- having us. Yeah. I saw you speak at One Million Cups, and you have a cool little invention there. Thank you. So yeah. I want you to tell the listeners what you got going on, and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, what I presented at One Million Cups is a stereo, vehicle stereo replacement. goes mm-hmm. inside the dashboard of your car. Uh, we're a company focused on automotive electronics. Where mm-hmm. our, all the founders of our company are excited about cars but uh, a little disappointed with the technology in cars. All right. And what we've what we've created is a product we call The Shelf. You can find out more about it at veyroot.com. Sure, V-E-H-R-O-O-T.com. Sure. Okay. And it allows you to use any size or brand mobile device as the center display in your dash. Sure, so phone, tablet, whatever yes. you got with a screen. Yep. Should I have a 27-inch tube TV or something like that? I probably don't want to go much past <laughs> 10. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you just simply set your device on it, and it's held in the center dash. Okay. And then if it's a phone, it'll charge wirelessly mm-hmm. and then operate as the as your infotainment system in the vehicle. So it'll give you, of course, nav. Sure. Uh, stream your audio. Okay. And allow you to take calls as well. Nice. So th- is there a wire that has to be connected from the phone or tablet to this unit? No. The shelf thing? No. That's the beauty of it. All it's right. It's very easy to use. Just okay. set your device on there and go. All right. And so something that's very hard to convey... Uh, just by speaking, is when you set your device on it, Yeah, uh, it, it's just like setting it on the table, but it's held on there sure. until you go to take it off. So Yeah, that thing is tough. We've developed a means of, of holding very large devices to the dash sure. just by setting them on there. So even a person yeah. like me that takes corners like a Mario and oh, Daddy, yeah. no problem. Yeah, I've tested some of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. On ramps, be prepared. Here we go. So this is essentially a replacement for... A given stereo within a car, is that correct? Correct. You'd take the stereo that's in the dash out mm-hmm. and then put our product in. Right. And our long-term vision is that your phone or tablet takes over all the functions of your car. Okay. So right now we, we provide a way to listen to your books or music and mm-hmm. nav and things that you're used to doing on your infotainment system. Sure. But as we continue to develop this product, it will pull diagnostics from the car and vi- do everything that the screen's doing today. Sure. Um, and, and beyond. Okay. The idea is that if you use a mobile device as a display in your car, mm-hmm. you can start bringing in apps sure. and really open up development in the vehicle. Oh, yeah. okay. What's interesting is I was listening to you speak and I was thinking the infota- infotainment system that I have in one of my cars has a voice thing so you can tell it to play a song or call yeah. someone. Yeah. And it is so bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So <laughs> bad. Yeah, if it's and like just, my car, it's bad. Yeah. I get frustrated because I'm like, you know, play Michael Jackson, whatever. And it's like, no, no, I don't understand what you're saying. Right. And you'll be yeah. like, play Michael <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Most and people it, have given up on that. Yeah, and yep. I feel like I shouldn't want to punch my new car. But at that right. moment, I want to punch my new car. I feel like if you would have dropped the price, you know, a few hundred bucks that I didn't have that technology, it would be an improvement. Because the technology is that bad. Yeah, and people are paying, uh, whether they realize it or not, several thousand dollars sure. for these screens in the car. All right. And so our solution is much less expensive than that, a fraction of that price, about 10%, right. a few hundred bucks. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and then you can talk to it to that to that point. We have a button on here where it's a microphone button. Okay. So if you're in the middle of a song or doing whatever, you press that button and you can talk. You can say, call. Sure, Michael Jackson. Call home. Call, right. right. Oh, so the, maybe not. <laughs> so the... Infra- or the software that you're interacting with on that thing, mm-hmm. is that your software or is that Google-based or how does that work? Well, there's firmware that okay. uh, but it, that controls the electronics itself, okay. but it's really open okay. to what software you use. So okay. Apple, Android, even Windows. I gotcha. have a Windows tablet on here right now. Okay, okay so yeah. it's exclusive to the, the brand of tablet or phone that you have on there. It's open to any brand, any size, any brand. Okay. That, so And any future product too as okay. well. Uh, it's simply we're we're just uh, taking data and audio over a Bluetooth connection. 
Okay. So if your device will rest on here, mm -hmm. and which pretty much any device will, any case, right. in any case. Sure. And then connect Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. You're golden. Nice. Yep. So does your is there an app or anything like that on the phone or tablet itself? Not that's required. No, I usually run Android Auto in the car. Okay. And that's nice. Uh, if you have a Android device, the yeah. Android Auto is an app you can download and. It's designed so that when you're in the car, you have a nice user interface that gives you quick access to everything. Oh, and, I'm out uh, of touch. I didn't even know that existed. It, it's, yep, it's out there. So, All right. Uh, you don't even need our product for that, but uh, nice. you can put a mount up there, run Android Auto, and it works really well okay. to, as a replacement for whatever's in your car. Sure. Uh, Apple, there was rumor they'd put CarPlay out there. Right. But uh, I haven't seen it yet, All right. at least not on phones. Sure. And... Windows is pretty easy when you put it in tablet mode okay. to operate. Sure. And but uh, further down the road, we intend to have our own app, and okay. our own app will be an interface similar to Android Auto, but it will give you uh, your backup camera will automatically pop up when you start the car. Okay. Uh, for example, it'll give you a lot of diagnostics. Sure. And there's a lot of information happening inside the vehicle that's kind of closed off to us for oh, the time. most part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we want to open that up All right. and give people access to know. You know how each fuel injector is performing on sure. their engine. If they want to know, oh, they could. You know, <laughs> some people, some people won't care to have that much detail, but we we want to put whatever details people are interested in sure. on their mobile device. So there's the people that just put the electrical tape over the check engine light, and the other right. people that say, "My well, car's telling me something. What is it telling me?" Well, and I think if people knew what the engine light meant, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be as inclined to just cover it up. I mean, if if you're, so here's a scenario I envision. Mm -hmm. down the road with our device you're driving mm -hmm. down the road and your engine light comes on and your car says to you james uh the front right sensor in your abs system has failed the average cost to replace this part is this would you like to schedule the repair oh that's magic having that kind of interaction with sure. your vehicle and it's uh it's something that i personally feel should be here today totally. but it's but it's still a long ways off sure and so that's part of why i'm passionate to get this going gotcha to improve our, our vehicles. Yeah, I was frustrated with, frustrated with my car because it'll say, like the tire pressure monitoring light will come on, mm -hmm. but it doesn't say which tire is low. So it's just right. like, go ahead and guess. And your car knows. It totally knows. It knows. Right? It's just not showing you. I'm yeah. like, how much more would it really have taken for you to tell me specifically what tire was low? Right. Instead, you got to, you know, I remember I was driving across the country and the light came on. So I'm like, all right, we got to go. And you pull over to some gas station. It's one of those gas stations that doesn't have free air. So no. you got to stick your credit card in there for the buck fifty or whatever. And I'm going around to each tire. <laughs> it turns no. out there must just be a sensor that's bad. I don't know which one. Oh. But all the pressures were fine. I'm like, this is dumb. As a side note to that, at Car Talk, I was yeah. listening. They said, when that light comes on, feel your tires. The hottest tire is the one that's low. All right, that makes sense. Yep. Yes, because a low-pressure tire will certainly be hotter. Yeah. That was good advice because so I have this, a car just like you. This one with the gauge... All the, the gauge says they're all at, I don't know, it was 38 PSI or whatever. They're all fine, pressure-wise. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm like, sensor, really? Yeah. If it would have told me left front, I'd check left front, and like, oh, the PSI is fine, we're good to go, move on with your life. But yeah. no, I'm like, I still don't know which one is bad. <laughs> yeah, and everything that's happening in your car is a mystery. Yeah. And, and it's really, um, there are tools you can buy, like an OB2, OBD plug. Sure. That you put in and then an app and you just be amazed at what data is in there. Oh, it's tons. Super it's cool just, stuff. Yeah. You know, and the automakers just haven't figured out a real good way to put that data in front of us. Right. And um, so is it by choice? Like, is that something they're trying to hide from us intentionally? I personally believe it's more user interface. Okay. You know, how do you. They don't want to confuse people. Enough. Right. Overwhelm people with sure. data. Somebody that's not mechanical at all going to the mechanic being like, my left right. front fuel injectors. <laughs> blown or whatever and the mechanic's like mm, actually it's right. the wiring that's bad it's not the fuel injector itself and having to argue with some lady that looked at her she had the display that said the fuel injector is bad right when there's really a diagnostics that has to happen beyond that to make sure so with the development path we're on we'll be able to give people as much or as little data as they want sure that's super cool so this is a replacement for any stereo or is there a limitation yeah that's a good question so this is a double what we call a doubled in size sure so almost all modern vehicles have an opening in the dash that yep. will accommodate this mm -hmm. and uh it, it may even be hard to believe looking at the dash in, in most newer vehicles especially that you could even replace that screen in there or right. radio but you can sure uh, there are companies that uh metra Sochi, there are a couple of them okay. that work to make dash kits 
and they're about a year behind the new vehicles. Sure. But if you've got, uh, say, a 2019, 2018, mm-hmm. you could go out today and find a dash kit or wiring nice. harness that would allow you to pull the screen out. Okay. With some exceptions. Sure. But most cars. And there's uh, several uh, companies here in town that mm-hmm. will, will do that work for you, including okay. Best Buy. And sure. A- so the, the information that you are get or that that unit is gathering, mm-hmm. or I guess there's in and out, right? So out is just speakers and those are standard, right? Yep. But is there any information coming in that you had essentially reverse engineer the code? Uh, well, that that's an interesting topic. So when you plug your phone into the dash, mm-hmm. your vehicle or many vehicles are taking data from your phone and yeah. sending it right out to the manufacturer. Oh, that's nice of and, that. And, right. <laughs> uh, yep. There's some good articles about that. Uh, uh can't think of one offhand, but uh, sure. Yeah, they they pull in those units will pull in your contact list and keep track of your travel information and, right. and things like that. Yep. It's nice of them. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they, I'm sure they justify it. I'm sure okay. they. Have, <laughs> right. I'm sure they say we need to we need to know how people are driving and how sure. they're using the car and how they're using the infotainment system. But, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just not a, a good. I think it really comes down to the user interface in cars. Okay. okay. You know, people. Uh, just haven't uh, it, it taken the time to learn. Sure. Uh, my wife just got a new Honda CRV. Okay. okay. And uh, menu upon menu upon menu upon menu. I mean, sure. it was pretty. I was pretty impressed, really, with with the tech in there. But uh, okay. Yeah, just people. People are familiar with uh, our angle is this. People are familiar with their phones sure. and their tablets. Sure. And so you start with that user interface, and you build on that, and you can do a lot from there. Sure. I imagine it's a challenge, right? Because a lot of people haven't figured out their turn signals. Right. It so, <laughs> doesn't seem like it. Anyway. It seems like this should be fairly easy, right? Yes but, yes. but in the end, we're actually asking people to go through a few menus. So I'm wondering, a lot of the infotainment stuff has other controls, like for climate and stuff like that, besides just the stereo aspect. So yes. is this taking that on as well? Yes, we intend to. Okay. We're not today. So we're at stage one here. This sure. is our first product. Okay. And... We're, we're proving out just interest in the general idea sure. of being able to use your mobile device. Okay. But yes, absolutely. We are able to take that information today, Sure. but we just haven't developed apps on it. Uh, but gotcha. um, if you have a vehicle that has your climate controls and mm-hmm. things in it, mm-hmm. most of the dash kits I was talking about earlier, yeah. move that down to another screen. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. All so right. I had a um, 08 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay. And yeah, the seat controls and heat controls were all up in the screen. Sure. But uh, the dash kit took all of those and put them into a screen under that main screen, oh. which was actually better. Okay. And made the dash look more simple. Sure. Made everything more simple. And then I was able to use my mobile device. Gotcha. So there's a way. All right. If you're frustrated with the tech in your car, sure. there's a way all to, right. to improve it. All right. Yeah. That's fair. <clears throat> I just, I didn't know. I imagine every manufacturer has probably got different ones and zeros right for their programming of their heater power seats and all that jazz Uh, it's all pretty common i mean so some of the protocols and vehicles i'll just list off a few like can ibus digital sure resistive and um there there's even been talk about just having the vehicle communications be standard ip oh really we do in networking yeah and some people i think some cars have implemented that sure i'd love to see that across the board right right but uh yeah the protocols are fairly common so uh, and it's by maker, so if you have a BMW, that's digital. Uh, and uh, if you have a uh, Chrysler product, it's CAN. Okay. Uh, Fiat Chrysler. Sure. Um, and so our unit does, if I, if I get real nerdy on you here, what we've really made is a communications router sure. that picks up all those protocols in okay. the vehicle and translates them into a common protocol called UART, okay. which you can develop mobile apps on. It's like a keyboard input. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So... When did you start this? Is this a year? Yeah. So uh, 2015 is when uh, I had the aha moment. Okay. Like this, is, this would be a sure. good platform. When you wanted for... to punch the stereo in your car. <laughs> yeah. Well, that story starts, uh, so I'll take you back. Sure. 2015. All right. Uh, I used to have a job where I traveled a lot. Okay. Like, I was gone all week almost. Sure. For most of the month. Okay. And uh, every week I'd get a new rental car from Enterprise. All right. And I had... A duffel bag that I carried with me, a small duffel bag filled yeah. with cables and <laughs> mounts. Okay. And the first 10 minutes in the car, at least, 
I would be setting up my phone in the car. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. And so uh, on one of these trips, it was actually down to Cincinnati, I, d- I thought, man, it sure would be nice if I could just set my phone in the dash. Sure. Just set my phone in the dash and go. Right. And that makes sense. Why, why, why can't we do this? So then th- on the trip down and back, I thought about, well, how could that happen? Right. And uh, when I got back, I met with a friend of mine here in Madison. His name's Ben Fisher. Okay. And he works in prototyping at Trek. So I knew okay. he could help me 3D print a mock-up. Sure. And I built one. Okay. And I put it in my, I had a Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee at the time. Sure. Put it in there. And uh, everybody that got in my car just went nuts. Like, this is a great idea. Yeah. This, this works great. Right. And, uh, and then I was selling a tablet. Okay. Uh, a ne- an old Nexus tablet that I'd used for navigation. It was sure. kind of like a GPS. Mm-hmm. And I took some pictures of it in my car. And within uh, a day of having it on eBay, I had several people message me and ask me how they could get whatever it was that was in my car. <laughs> That's awesome. And, they don't uh, want the tablet, just the shelf. Yeah, the I'm not really interested in the tablet, but how do I get that? So um, one guy even offered uh, to give me a few hundred bucks to build one for him. So I thought, wow. well, maybe we're onto something here. Sure. So then we went, uh, and this was still... Uh, no, then in tw- early 2016, uh, we went to the Madison Startup Fair mm-hmm. and figured we could build 10 of these, Okay, my my rough functional prototypes, sure. and just see what people thought. All right. And uh, people went nuts. And we asked people to sign up to let mm-hmm. us put these in their car. Sure. And we got 10 strangers All right. to, to let us put these in their car, and we mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. And we told everybody, hey, in, in a few months, we'll come back, and yeah. we'll take these out. But okay. we just want to know what you liked, what you didn't like. But right. So then after three months when we went back, the short story is nobody wanted us to take them out. <laughs> Everybody's like, can you just leave it in there? Is that okay? Right. And so uh, then we, a uh, close family friend of ours, uh, fu- gave us some funding to, to develop our own electronics. Sure. And um, Wait, let's just pause for a moment yeah. here. So at this point, when you have the, them in the 10 vehicles. Yeah. Is it literally a shelf, or is there electronics and stuff like that to go with it? So it was a spark, what they call a spark fun, or okay. a Bluetooth development board. Okay. And just kind of a hodgepodge of components that right. we put together. Okay. And um, then we just 3D printed the the front. So it had the stereo aspect to it? Yes. Okay. And uh, we just 3D printed everything. Okay. And uh, used off-the-shelf components. All right. And one of the things we made ourselves was the uh, the adhesive or the sure. gels. That, yeah. And um, that, that honestly it didn't go too well. I mean, we poured, we mixed chemicals in the base. One of the guys mixed chemicals in his basement. And oh, no. These, and they worked well enough to prove the point. Sure. Now we're using All right. much better stuff. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, after after that, it kind of motivated us to keep going. And, and we built our own boards. And Nice. And we really thought it would be pretty simple to kind of just – Oh, we'll build this circuit board, sure, and um, you know mold these plastics and metal mm-hmm. and be off. Right. And um, a couple of guys that are so there's four founders of the company. Okay. One of them worked in, has worked in automotive electronics for 35 years. The other guys had a prototyping, and both of them kind of cautioned me, like, "Look, eh, it's probably not going to be as easy as just build one board and All right. put it out there." Sure. But I, you know. Right, the entrepreneur says, I'd, nonsense, <laughs> we'll challenge get accepted. Get her done. Yeah. So uh, we built one, and uh, we're so confi- I was so confident that we were just going to go right to market with this sure. thing. And uh, I was so confident we flew in one of the other founders' cousins from California, who's a photographer, to take pictures of it in the dash. Oh, and wow. get, a, you know, get us ready for our social media campaign sure. and all this stuff. Sure. Uh, the first one actually uh, blew up and caught on fire. Oh, no. While the guy was in the car taking pictures. Oopsie. Because uh, it turns out when you when you put wireless charging mm-hmm. in a Bluetooth module and mm-hmm. a cell, radar, cell radio, yeah. the phone, right on top of each other, they yeah. hit each other. Oh. That's why you don't see wireless chargers out on the market inside of radios. Oh. You see wireless chargers as a standalone device. Sure. Or if they're in a car, they're like in the center console far away from all electronics. Interesting. Okay. So when you try to put wireless charging in the dash, yeah. um, you you are exposing yourself to a lot of problems. So that that fire yeah. uh, turned out to be a good thing because we were able to, We, I mean, <coughs> we, had, we had spent a lot of money up to this point. So <laughs> we, were, we weren't going to just turn around. Sure. Uh, but we, we found ways to, to shield Okay. And, and build up uh, 
the components on our board to okay. avoid them catching on fire. Nice. And uh, yeah, some some companies that have looked at this said, well, "Why are all your components so expensive?" Well, sure, they they have to be tough for right. one thing. All right. Yeah. Nice. So anyway, that did set us back. I got to say, you know, it's, sure. it's taken more than a year. It actually, as we've gone uh, through prototypes, we've found uh, we need to improve this and. Uh, we don't want them to catch on fire for one. Sure, that's and, fair. You know, okay. we've had some acoustical improvements to make, and okay. Um, and a, co- a cool thing that's happened is a couple people have just come on board and and helped us out, like professionals in mm. industrial design and in okay. acoustics, uh, in in wireless charging, and sure. just sort of said, "Hey, let me help you out here." All right. But that's that, super cool. It is cool. It has been very nice. Nice. Uh, so what, I guess, what do you see for the next few years? I guess, what's the, the next step, the stage of the business? So we're at the stage now where we, we're, our designs are complete to build, mm-hmm. but okay. they're expensive to build. All so right. we're, we're working to raise a half a million dollars to build a thousand of them. Sure. And then that first thousand will allow us to uh, define our market. Okay. And improve our market. Sure. So that um, we can build 10,000. So yeah. essentially, you'll have to, if my math is correct, you'll have to find 500 people to put these in their cars. Is that right? Um, well, so we're selling to dealers and distributors. Okay. And we recently went through a program here in Madison called G-Beta. Oh, it's sure. It's a business accelerator program. Yeah. And the Great idea program. was to get the funding we need and get customers. Like, how do we get okay. customers? And then how do we get the funding we need from angel investors? Sure. And, and uh, they suggested we put a pre-order link on our website. All right. Which I was opposed to sure. initially. Uh, I I didn't like the idea of putting a pre order link and communicating that these would be ready soon. Sure. But G Beta said, well, if you don't get orders, engage interest, then you're right. never going to get the funding to build them. Sure. So, so do it. Chicken and egg. Yeah, right? it is. Sure. So we did it, and a remarkable thing happened. We uh, within a week of that link being on our website, it showed up on other websites. Oh wow! And including some distributor websites Holy and cow. a popular mobile electronics blog called CE Outlook. Mm-hmm. And within one 24-hour period of time, our pilot inventory of 1,000 units was all claimed. Wow. So over and over again, we've proven interest. Okay. Um, you know, every step of the way, we've kind of thought, well, are we on the right track here? We've gone to some auto shows that were kind of a do or die. Sure. And, and every time we kind of stick our neck out in public and, and show what we have, it's just... Yeah. Every, there's know, interest. There's interest. Okay. Yeah, that's proven. So, um, so yeah, we've got uh, a list of dealers over 30 dealers and distributors across the country wow and um, so when you say dealer you mean the best buys of the world the ams is yes of the world, exactly or? dealers distributors okay uh, dealers and distributors so crutchfield or stuff like that we haven't talked to crutchfield okay um i have started talking to best buy sure when i said connect the car i seem to okay. get their attention so right right and uh vox uh they're a, okay. the, they're the largest distributor of mobile electronics in the world oh wow okay so they've already said once you can deliver give us a delivery date we'll sign a po and nice. then um other distributors um across the world right the uk australia we've got all right so over 30 distributors and probably about 50 individuals wow that have come on and, and pre-ordered okay so now it's just a matter of convincing um Unfortunately, we can't just go to the bank. Right. We'd like to just go to the bank and say, okay, we've got orders. Let's do this. And, right. and actually, we have done that. I say we can't, but I've tried. Sure. Uh, but <laughs> They're more than happy to they, tell you no. They're, well, when they say, okay, it's going to take you how many months? It's going to take nine months from the time we receive funding to, to have the product ready. Okay, for and manufacturing and yes, all that kind of stuff? Okay. To have the product in the consumer's hands. So that's a sure. long time. And the other thing is, is even once we get through our pilot inventory, we're still in the red. So, oh, gotcha. you okay. know, as a startup, that's, you know, pretty typical. Like Probably Bezos, common, I'm yeah. sure Amazon ran in the red for quite a while before. Like up until they, a year or two <laughs> right, ago, right? right? So that's a common story. Sure. So what it really takes is it takes uh, an individual or a group of individuals, like a venture group or mm-hmm. angel, a s- angel group or single angel investor to take an interest in what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And so that's really where we're parked right now. Okay. We're, well, we're not parked. You know, We're still working on our designs to improve them. Sure. Uh, we're still doing testing and uh, still developing the product right. and the company. Okay. But getting product in customers' hands is really what we'd like to do right. more than anything else. That's the name of the game, right? Yes. And, uh, yeah, so to do that, we need to, to raise about a half a million dollars. To, All right. Yeah. And is that... I haven't raised money before, so is that yeah. a reasonable thing? Like, that doesn't seem yeah, it, doesn't it, seem like stupid money. 
It is. And you know that I haven't raised money before either. Okay. <laughs> and that, that's part of the problem, sure. to be honest with you. I've had uh, other businesses, yeah. but none that required a huge amount of capital right at the start. Okay. And so this is new for me, and that was a big attraction of the G-Beta program mm-hmm. and programs like it, like Generator. We've applied to sure. that. We may go through that. Yep. Um, it, it's to show me, hey, you know, this is... And, and starting out, I just wanted to raise enough money mm-hmm. to get us on our feet for three to four years and never have to raise money again. Okay. Like I wanted millions of dollars. Sure. And so that's, I, I was focused <laughs> on that. Sure. And uh, I had many people tell me, many people say, look, you've got to scale back. Right. You've got to find a reasonable starting point. All right. And, um, pr- you know, prove your market first. Sure. Prove your market. Actually sell them. All right. Get, start getting customer feedback. And once right. we do that, then step up the raise a little sure. bit. So... I had my heart set on doing one single raise, but that's not normal sure. for a seed. All right. For, it, there's stages you go through. You go sure. through uh, pre-seed, seed, series A, series B, series C. Wow. Th- those are kind All of right. the stages sure. you go through to get on your own, to become All you right. know, fully grown. Sure. And so right now we're in seed stage. Okay. Going into seed stage. Going into seed stage. Going okay. into seed stage. Leaving sure. pre-seed, going into seed. Okay. And, you know, this is uh, – it's a tough stage because – um. Yeah, that you have to get somebody who loves the product. Sure. Themselves. Okay. At that point. All right. I think it's as much, uh, and maybe even more, um, passion than it is wisdom necessarily. All right, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Probably a driver for a lot of businesses. Yeah. So, the I guess the people that have said no from an investment point of view, did they give you a reason? Yeah. The. The reason I've got, the clearest reason I've got, it's kind of funny, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll talk to an investor and we've had a couple of investors who are interested and they're, this yeah. is great. I would use this myself. And then they For come sure. back with, they start mumbling. <laughs> and I'm like, what is it? Tell us. Cause we need to right. know. Um, common thing I hear is just that hardware. All right. Hardware is, is a risky thing. We and, need and something that is not tangible. <laughs> right. That's fair. That's yeah. Like I think software is easier because, um, it's you much know, more it's, scalable. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Or low cost scalable, right? Right. I mean, you know, you develop the app and then right. just start making money. Spread Whereas we, we require a constant flow of capital sure. to continue to build, sure. continue to redesign. And and that's a fair you know, it's a it's a fair concern. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have a product here, uh if you if you've ever owned a smartphone, you know mm-hmm. that every few years they right. change so much. Sure. And then the same will be true of our technology. You know, we'll right. get this on the market. But then as it's selling, we'll be developing the next product. We sure. have to because the components on our board constantly get refreshed. Oh, really? You know? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So the, the brains in here, it's an NXP processor. Sure. That'll only be around for so long. Our Bluetooth module, even All our right. amplifier, everything that we've got under the hood. Sure. Uh, just, you know, has a shelf life. So, so how do you solve that for the end user? Do they just have to upgrade that unit every Well, when years, someone or? when someone, the beautiful thing is when someone buys this, mm-hmm. From their viewpoint, the technology in the dash is always updated with every mobile device they get. Sure. So it's a lot better than what we have in our cars now. Right. Where it's already an outdated screen when you get the car. When you get it, it's already outdated. At least um, we're allowing people to improve, you know, their screen resolution, their GPS, their their sound quality, their charging, everything that gets improved with the phones will improve now in their dash as well. Okay. What I'm talking about... um, most of our consumers won't even notice the change okay? because um, they don't care, honestly, what the brain is in here, no. as long as it works exactly if the same. If it's working, then yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's, it's like processors for computers. You sure. can buy them for so long, and then they just they change. They upgrade right. them. They improve okay. them. And so um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to add features over time. Okay. Um, We'll continue to integrate more with the vehicles to bring more and more data to the smartphone. Sure. Uh, one good example is our, our first product uh, doesn't have the backup camera. Okay. That doesn't pull up on your phone. Right. That made me cry. Yeah. I want- <laughs> but now, now, I've got a backup camera. I've got a thing. It's like a little solar thing on my license sure. plate that gives me a backup camera on my mobile phone. All right. And, oh, I, didn't wow. ha- and I didn't have a backup camera in the car I'm driving now anyway. So oh, whatever. All right. But we know our next version sure. will have that improvement okay um and we'll continue to do things like that we'll continue to bring more and more data from the car sure. out to the mobile device okay we can do a lot today but as right. we you know develop will and we have to because cars are getting smarter sure they're 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 building more and more into them so right 
Yeah, well, and so back to you know the concerns angel investors would have with hardware. Mm-hmm. We just have to continually be innovating. We're not. We can't just be this one trick pony. Like, sure. oh, we got this good idea. Look at this. Right. We have to. This is good forever. It's this like is, a Model T. Right? <laughs> it's good for now, but yeah, now we got to keep going. Sure. It. So. So I imagine one of the challenges that you'll run into is just the wiring, right? Because you're gonna add backup camera and then a reverse trigger, parking brake trigger, all that kind of stuff. Yes. I just and installed a stereo, I don't know, a couple months ago, and I was amazed at how many wires were there Yep, there's that were not, like, stereos before. It was just like, we got your, your eight speaker wires, right? Yep. Power, constant, and ground, and you just move on through, like, maybe an amplifier turn on or something like that. Yep. Instead of that, that was it. This one <laughs> had, like, a dozen extra wires. And I'm like, okay, we got camera, we got reverse, it wanted to know parking brake, it wanted to trigger for that. It had all this extra stuff. I was like, holy cow. This is more than a 20 minute install. Yep, they're they're more complicated to install now for sure. Sure. Um, our wiring is um, all standard. So sure. if you've installed a car stereo before, mm-hmm. you'd be able to install Yeah, this. I was looking at the colors. The, you got the gray, gray, black. Yep. Yeah, white, white, black. Sure. Uh, the only difference would be that we do, we can plug into the can or resistive or okay. digital. So we're doing that direct now. Okay. And if you have you ever. Uh, tied steering controls into the stereo i have put, okay so you don't have to buy a steering control module oh you don't have to okay we already have the brains in here to pick up everything that's going on in the vehicle including steering controls okay so you can just plug right in and and set your steering controls and, and go. Mean, you help us the installers find the wire to plug into right um actually we don't but oh. they know so more of the story they is the, like the, the installers. Or? Oh, the installers. The installers. Okay. So that's a, po- a good point to make. We'll only sell to dealers and distributors. Oh, okay. So you're not selling to someone like me who's no. like, I can totally take it apart. You could buy it now from Best Buy. Okay. Or AMS or Radio Doctors sure. or Flynn Audio here in town. But okay. um, they, if, yeah, if they didn't install it, then it'd be up to you to figure it out. But we are only selling to them. Oh. And we're doing that for a couple of reasons. One, um, Hartford Insurance, who's okay. given us our products in general liability so sure. that's the only way we can for oh one. really yeah they said that if they want insurance uh. insurance <laughs> but it's fair because we don't we also don't want to support every single like if we sell a thousand of these sure we don't want 400 people calling us no, asking. <laughs> I get it. we, we I don't get have it. A, the tech support is yeah so we need that person in the middle to to be with sure the person okay uh, physically there and to support them but also as we develop um Working with installers who understand a product and are mm-hmm. willing to take the time, they'd have to download our software. Mm-hmm. Even today, we have software that you put on a laptop, okay. and you plug into the front, okay. and you can program it. Oh! And today, we're we're giving steering controls through that, sure, and only steering controls. But we have the ability to do more. All right. Even today, we can more do more. Example being, uh, so we can pick up vehicle diagnostics today, okay. and if we had our own mobile app, yeah. behind that, we could do some cool stuff with that. Oh, okay. And and we intend to in the future. Sure. Have that. So we want to just train sure. the installers. All right. And people who buy the product, you know, from from a dealer. Sure. Or dealers who buy it from a distributor understand that that they mm-hmm. need to read up and learn how to Gotcha. Wire okay. it in cuz So it's training yeah. that whole crew of people too and I suppose instead of individual end users. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So gotcha. train one person who installed a hundred times. All right, much all right. much more simple model than sure. trying to support That's everybody. That's yeah. fair. And I, back in the day, you know, I used to sell computers for Sears in the eighties. Okay. And even then, computer makers kind of had the same idea. You know, all right. you can you went to Sears and you bought mm-hmm. a computer, and when you bought the computer, it was just expected that the person you bought it from was going to bring it to your house, and set it all up and plug it in and show really? you. Oh yeah. I spent more time in people's houses than I spent in the store. Well, in but the eighties, I imagine that was early. You know. Sure. Er, early in that. Um, yep. I just upgraded some of our machines to Windows 10, and that was such a headache. I thought, is that 2020? <laughs> this should yeah. not be a headache. This should be like, yeah. click, done. But yeah. So I can only imagine the 80s, what you had to deal with with computers. I, I enjoyed it, but... You're yeah, setting up the bed, like, control, alt, whatever. Oh, right, people weren't comfortable hooking up their printers and hooking all this stuff. Sure. Up, you know. all Most right. people that bought sure. computers. That's crazy. Yeah. Interesting. So I want to back up a step to... The other businesses that you had, were they anywhere near this? Were they tangible items that you were selling? No, no. Uh, this is the first. Well, I did have a business in La Crosse. Okay. I used to live in La Crosse. It was okay. called Paradox. All right. And um, I supported off-site backups. Okay. 
So the the companies I worked with had data that they were concerned about losing. Sure. And so I worked with them to um, back up their data off site. All right. And I got pretty creative with it. Sure. Um, I had it so that they if they saved their data in a certain folder, yeah. that folder would automatically back up to my file oh, servers. So you invented uh-huh. Dropbox before Dropbox was cool. I did. Not only that, now this is 2001. I met a guy called Michael Scosma in Twin Lake, Michigan. And I said, okay. hey, I've got all this data from these customers. Yeah. It'd be nice if they could use a web browser to get to the data, log in with the username yeah. and password and just use a web browser. Can, can we do that? And he said, yeah. So truly, James, in 2001, yeah. six years before these two guys in MIT even thought of Dropbox, yeah. I was selling it as a product under the name Paradox. Same thing. That's crazy. But cool. I didn't know about angel investments or venture. Right. And everybody that talked to me said, you should market this. And I thought, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I've had similar stories in the 90s. Uh, I talked to a guy. I said, you should be able to just, you shouldn't need to run wires to speakers. You should sure. Be. And he said, well, you need a transmitter and a receiver on each end. And um, so I guess we, we kind of drew up the schematics for Bluetooth All before, right. before Bluetooth. And then even well, existed the world. so all right i've i've always been i've always had ideas mm-hmm. and uh, and that's even what i do today i just sure I look at a, a problem and I come up with a unique solution gotcha and so but up till now i haven't really um stepped too far out okay with these ideas like raising money yeah. from outside people and giving sure. up ownership in your company day one right. before you're even making money that's so, that's new what happened to this pseudo Dropbox company? Um, Dropbox. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, did you did you have servers? Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. You, okay, so you had some server farm or a couple server farms. Uh, um, yep, and, and one by one, customers just dropped off because I was I was charging like a hundred bucks a month. Okay. And it was expensive. But back in the day, relative to like if Dropbox didn't exist. Yeah. That's, so uh, uh, I was charging more, and it, it was uh. It did require, um, you know, the only way you couldn't just go online and download it. Sure. I was coming into your store. I didn't have the right. um, storefront that wasn't Dropbox user friendly. had. Okay, sure. Yeah. The app itself was, once you got the app on sure. your machine and it was set up and running. All right. Um, but, so did yeah. You, did you code this? No. I mean, I, I, I did from the server side of things okay. and on the on the desktop, like the app itself. Sure. I mean, but to get the web... The folder thing where somebody went and put a file in a folder and yeah. it automatically uploaded? That was another guy, Michael Scosma in Michigan, gotcha. who okay. actually wrote all that and gotcha. mag- magic that right. allowed people to <laughs> get on a web browser PFM, and get to it. Maybe. Yes. Sure. All right. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I had people tell me then, back to that, that if I had marketed, sure. I would have been able to sell so many people. Anybody I showed it to, yeah, right. we'll take it. You sure. Know, it was an easy – I loved going in and show- – to right. new customers because they you could scale always bought that, it. Yeah, once you could scale that, then your price point would be lower. And right. I'd yeah. be talking to a billionaire right now. Right. Well, yeah, if I'd made it so it was an online download and yeah. you could just set everything up online, right. well, that, was the, that was the step I didn't take. Sure. You know, I didn't take it to make it big like that. All right. And even though I knew it was a great idea, um, I, I got to be honest, you know, I had a family at the time. I was working in a full-time job in addition to my own business. Sure. And I just wasn't, uh, focused on that right right and you know now today uh looking at these guys the, the dropbox who've received you know love and praise and are considered the fathers of cloud computing i'm right. like gosh darn it <laughs> <laughs> if you only but, hindsight yeah. is 2020 20, right yeah that's the way it goes but you know another part of it too um is maintaining file servers and, and maintaining that i think i had a lot less excitement okay there as well sure so that was a good lesson mm-hmm. for me as well i mean Having a good idea and, you know, even getting that idea to market, mm-hmm. um, if you don't have just some sort of passion behind it, sure, who cares? Right. And uh, that's why I have um, really stood by this now for years because, A, I know it's a great idea. It's, sure. It's going to take uh, kind of a change in mindset mm-hmm. for people to use their mobile device rather than what's in the vehicle. Yeah. And trust our method of attachment and sure. the way it works. Mm-hmm. But um, it is a really cool, it involves cars. Right. It involves mobile devices. Right. Two of my favorite things. Sure. And That's I picture fair. myself 
uh, going to a car show, mm-hmm. and sh- which we've done. All right. And that's my zen. Yeah. I mean, that's where I want to. Talking about file servers and <laughs> logging into a website. It's news cool, fest. but it was, yeah, it's just not not something uh, I was driven as driven to do. And, All and right. with this, it's a different thing. Yeah. It's a different thing from anything I've done before. Um, yeah, because of that. because it's just I would I would love to stick with this for ten years. Sure. At least. All right. And so it's interesting because I look at that thing and I'm like, the first thing I do when I get in my car is think, where can I set my phone? Yeah. And if I have things in the cup holders, like cups, I can't put it there. <laughs> this is dumb. I can't find a place to literally set my phone, which everybody has. And phones yeah. are too big now to actually fit in your pocket. And if you can sit down with your phone in your pocket, I don't know if it's good or bad, right? Anyways. Yeah. So I think you solved a huge problem just by having a shelf for the phone. Now having the shelf for the phone that actually does something, that's incredible. No cables. No cables. That's magical. I just, I came from a gas station on the way here, and I saw some girl, right? She gets in her car, and then she put her eye, her little headset in. Yeah, I see people with headphones all the time. I don't, like, one, that seems dangerous to me. Yeah. Two, that seems stupid, because you got to take so much time, right? I'm like, get in the car and go. I don't even pay attention if the car's running. I'll know if it doesn't move, right? So it just takes so much time. And she just stopped at a gas station, right? So that means that she had to stop her car, take her earbuds out, and maybe she paused whatever she was listening to, maybe not. Moved on through life in the gas station, come back in the car, get the little headphone things in, play or resume or back up, whatever she's got to do on her phone. It just seems like a huge time suck. It is. And those long trips I was taking uh, for that job I was telling you about, I, I thought about wearing headphones. Oh, really? Maybe I did. (laughs) <laughs> no but i mean yeah Maybe it's just it me a- i'm just like what do you do with a fire truck if i was a fire person right? i'd be yeah. like seriously I mean, I it was dumb how much louder can the siren be they're like la 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 and we carry around a sense of guilt too like every time we pick up our phone in the car sure. I, at least i did i just thought oh yeah. that's and the rule uh, right that even the people that um no even people that text while driving hate other people that text while driving yeah yeah <laughs> no that's a very true statement yeah yeah so that's the thing and and there's ways um once your device is in the dash, you'll mm-hmm. find out you you can text and just talk. Sure. Yep. You I hope they're to. not. <laughs> well, what I mean is, like, a text, to text comes it. in sure. and it reads it to you. All right. It, so, yeah, on my phone, again, using Android Auto. Sure. Uh, with that interface up, it will say, text from home. Oh, gotcha. And then it'll read it to me. Okay. And then it'll say, do you want to reply? And I'll say, sure. yeah. And, that, right. and the speech-to-text for, like, Google and Apple... Is, come a long way yes it is spot on 99 percent of the time yeah and automakers uh yeah they're just not there i can't less imagine than, getting there yeah so much less yeah. than <laughs> right <laughs> to a fault yeah i wish they would <laughs> just say hey we're like four tenths of the where we need to be so do you really want this in your car no so at any rate um and what made you decide to go down this road? You had this idea, right? But tons of people have ideas. Yeah. So what made you want to pull the trigger on it? What was the the moment where you're like, we can totally do this? Uh, a lot had to do with the people who've who've come on board to help. Okay. So when I built it for myself, mm-hmm. that was all. That was it. Sure. That was all I was going to do with it. Right. And then after um, some of the excitement mm-hmm. I got from the people around me, I actually yeah. drew up some provisional patents. All right. And I thought, well, maybe there's something here. I'll sure. Draw up some patents. And then um, the other founders, like I mentioned, uh, one guy's ahead of prototyping at Trek, or manages prototyping at Trek. Uh, another guy that's an automotive for 35 years. And then yeah. another good friend of mine from Michigan who has started uh, other businesses okay. as well that have done well. And, um, you know, the four of us got together and worked on this. And then people around us, um, ca- okay, so Trek bikes. Yeah. When Ben went to them and told them what we were doing. They opened up their manufacturing facility. They they made all of our early prototypes for wow. free. They didn't charge us a penny. Nice. For the materials or the time or anything. And then, um, you know, other big companies. Then then we found we wanted to do better with our prototypes. We wanted them to look better. We wanted mm-hmm. them to be a plastic that wouldn't melt in the dash. Sure. I actually had some <laughs> prototypes in the basement that looked like oh, you no. know, a melted marshmallow. Sure. Oops, um, but when we sent out for bid, we weren't getting good samples back. Okay. So, um, oh, geez, I'm trying to think of the name of this company right now. Um, Stratasys. Okay. So Stratasys, they they make kind of a Cadillac 3D printer. We went to them and said, hey, who do, do you know who could do this for us? Yeah. Stratasys opened up their manufacturing. They made our prototypes for 
over a year. Didn't wow. charge us a penny. Um, we, we, uh, the industrial designers, uh, we've worked with it, it just, um, we're working with a company now called Celtech. Okay. And they're a big dog yeah. in the acoustical engineering field. Okay. And they've, um, shared improved designs with us and just nice. as we go along, all the other companies that think this is a great idea here, take this. So you've gotten a lot of help. Get a lot of help. That's super cool. And so that's really what's driven us through. Sure. Um, you know, we're not just kind of like blindly passionate about this. Right. We're, we're actually getting a lot of feedback from manufacturers sure. and our customers, potential okay. customers. Sure. That just keep us driven. All right. Yeah. So what do you see? Uh, say you get your half million dollars tomorrow. Be mm -hmm. cool. Right? Yeah. That'd be, that'd be, that'd hypothetically. Right. That'd be great. The nine months from then, you get the units out there. Yep. In the people's hands and they're installed, I imagine. Yes. And then next step after that? So <clears throat> once we get the funding to build these, mm -hmm. I will immediately start raising money for the next build. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay. And, and more money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and a lot of that will be, look, you know, we've already, uh, these are already claimed. Sure. And we're building them. And, hey, once we get to the finish line and we've built these mm -hmm. and they're in customers' hands, We've proven that we can do it. We've proven right. that we can build them. We've proven that we can distribute them. We've proven mm -hmm. that people want them. Sure. Let's build and more. And you're getting feedback? Yes. All right. So that customer feedback will drive a lot of things for sure. us. Sure. But really, um, raising money this round is um, just to build these these first thousand mm -hmm. and get them out there. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the, the day that check's in the bank, I'll be out there searching for the next one. Gotcha. Okay. To kind of follow up after okay. we've delivered our first All right. round of process. So then second chunk of money comes in. Yep. And then what what are you doing with that second chunk of money? So depending on how quickly these sell, we believe that they'll sell in a month. Okay. And if we're right about that, sure. and they sell in a month, we'll go right to 10,000. Okay. And then we'll have 10,000 units ready All right. to distribute So you there. tweak, rinse, repeat another nine months or whatever? Yep. yep. And okay. so, yep, so that money comes in and also uh, we'll be making... Uh, design enhancements okay. like we want to make the the case smaller and things like that in gotcha. the back so it's easier to install and some, based on feedback okay. we're getting sure we'll make improvements and um then yeah then we build ten thousand. all right and that next round of funding will get us to the point where you know we're firing on all cylinders now we've got a product in a company all right to the point that you're profitable yes all right yep. So right. after the Series A funding round, now we're profitable. Sure. Maybe not profitable enough to build a million. Sure. Without some injection. Right. But, you know, we've proven that. But I imagine at some point there's going to be a peak of capacity, right? Like where you, all the people that want them have them eventually, right? Whatever that number is. I don't know. There's well 300 some odd million people in the U.S. Yeah, there's whatever. <laughs> so. There's new cars every year. There are <laughs> so there's so, new. Ca I mean, we we would continue, um, and we would court with automakers too. Okay, we definitely and we have. We okay. actually sat in front of Ford. Oh, nice. Uh, GM, yeah, and they um, were they cool? They were cool. They were very cool. All we right. just met with Ford Michigan last year. Okay, and um, I don't know if it competes with what they're doing, but they just kind of like, eh, well, thanks for your time. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> cool idea. Thanks for your time. Cool idea. So, <clears throat> you know, proving our market. Sure. And once we've sold 10,000, then we'll, or we'll even before that, we'll okay. continue to court with the automakers. Okay. Because this makes a lot of sense um, for the automakers as Just well. Just to include from the factory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have this, our unit in there. Sure. Or, or use a lot of the technology behind. And realistically, they could have an and app on the phone or tablet or whatever, the little Ford app exactly. or map or whatever. Exactly. So you know, they, they can steal your data. Like, <laughs> it, it puts them in the market where they can supply essentially a tablet sure. that's physically attached here mm -hmm. and um, have their own software. Mm -hmm. And if people like that software, guess what? They'll take that into other cars with them right. And, right. and use it there. Sure. And so it gives the automakers a chance to compete in that market, right. in the software market, Sure. which I would think they would want. I would think they'd want a shot at that. I would hope so, but when you yeah. look at the stocks of the, <laughs> the big automakers, but then, they're so having a rough day. It, it also makes it it's attractive to buyers because if you get in the car and you're like, okay, um, in a year or two or even day one, mm -hmm. I'm tired of this technology. Three screws in the front, you pull it out, you buy a faceplate from us, put it on there. All and right. You, now you can use your phone. All right. Or your tablet. Sure. So it would be 
day one for the automaker is a less expensive, more versatile sure. technology solution. All right. And but they're the licensing cons- through you or? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, or building, th- you know, getting from us directly. Sure. And then for the customer, they aren't going to turn away from a vehicle because of the tech. Sure. They're like, oh, well, pff, all I got to do is take right. a few screws out. It doesn't cost that much anyway. Right. And use my own phone. All right. Kind of like we do at home. Right. I mean, you, you get tired of a laptop or a computer or mm-hmm. a mobile phone. And yeah. You're not stuck with it for 10 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sometimes I want to be, though, just because I'm used to it, right? Sure. Yeah. I still miss my razor. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> everybody oh. remembers the razor. Right? I think everybody had one. That was the day. So I guess as far as the ask goes, I imagine you're looking for investors. Is that what it comes down to? Yes. All right. That is our focus. And does this have to my be focus. one investor or is it can be? It can be one. Yeah. But it could be more yeah. than one. It could be more than one. Okay. Yep. So it doesn't have to so. be one person that just writes you a check for $500,000. It could be 500 people writing a check for $1,000 or something. We would want to try to keep it to as few as possible. Okay. Sure. So, um, you know, one would be ideal. Okay. Um, two or three would be fine. Okay. Yeah, four. Sure. And then um, there are what they call venture groups. Okay. Which take individuals' money and mm-hmm. kind of go in almost like a, sure. a bank. But, sure. You know, and um, th- they would be great as well. All right. Working with one cool. or two of those. Cool. I like it. So tell us the website again, just so that people can check these things out. Yeah, uh, it's veirut.com. It's spelled V E H R O O T. All right. Com. And they, short, tell short, me about the name. Tell me where you came up with the name. Short for vehicle root. All right. Vehicle so root. vehicle root. All right. And we picture ourselves as a, a root for technology in the vehicle. So, mm-hmm. you know, on a, a computer, you have kind of this root firmware that sure. loads. Right. And then everything else kind of builds up on that. Sure. And we intend to be the same for vehicles. Nice. Where you just, we have a platform that'll yeah. run any software, any hardware. Nice. Dude, you got a clever invention there. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm excited to see where you're at another year or two, something like that, to see where it's gone, where it's going, all that jazz. I'd love to yeah. see it prosper and grow. I'd love to see backup camera on there. Yeah, yeah. But I, backup camera is just one of those things that I thought I'd never use. I thought those are for people that don't know how to drive. But my God, are they magical. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. I love, That's nice. I love parallel parking like that. It gives you, a, yeah, a sense of security. And you can see all around you. There is. It's just magical. It's, yeah. Anyway, super cool. So this is Tom Robillard, CEO and co-founder of Veyroot and Veyroot.com. Super cool. Making the world of car stereos a better place. Cars better, too. I also want to say you have have, um, preamp outputs on the thing I saw. Oh, yeah. So if someone wants to add their stereo, even a subwoofer output. Look at that. Yep. Yep, right. we've run it. We've run it both ways through our own amp. Sure. Uh, it's 25 by 4. All right. So a little bit on that for the audio files. Uh, we deliver better than CD quality sound over Bluetooth. Okay. Uh, we use, uh, it's called AppDex HD. Okay. For the real nerdy. All right. Uh, and, it, and it really does sound better than a CD. And then we have a 25 by 4 internal amp. Nice. If you are, you know, if you don't have an amp in your car. And if you sure. do have an amp in your car, then, yeah, we have the preamp. We the pre's. Out. That's super cool. Yep. Awesome. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, brought to you by Bank of Sun Prairie. If you are listening to this on the web, please like, subscribe, and share. My name is James Kademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is also brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist, receptionist, that word shouldn't be that hard, (laughs) services for small businesses across the country. On the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business. On the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, The Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Tom Robillard, CEO and co-founder of Veyroot, veyroot.com. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Tom, for being on the show. This has been super cool. Thank you, James. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunprayemediacenter.com. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link. Found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening.